Sharon, would you like to talk a little bit about the study that you presented today? Yeah, sure. So I, I gave a um, overview talk on clinical perspectives and um, talked about these different strategies and reviewed the current clinical trials aimed at activating latent reservoirs, reducing viral replication, boosting immunity, and making cells resistant to HIV, which is, of course, Pablo's approach with the um, gene therapy. But I spent a bit of time talking about one of the studies that we're doing in Australia, looking at activating latent HIV using a drug called Varinostat. Mm -hmm. And, and um, Varinostat is an anti-cancer drug that basically um, unravels the HIV gene inside the resting cell and allows the virus to come out. And, um, it's the best way I've heard it explained. <laughs> <laughs> Simply and yeah, clearly. and and um, so yeah. we have a study in Australia where we have patients with a high CD4 count, greater than 500, on stable antiretroviral therapy, receive 14 days of varinostat, and we do very frequent blood sampling and rectal biopsies at days at at the beginning and end of treatment to see whether what we see varinostat does in the test tube happens in people. And um, our study is a different design to the study that was presented today by David Margolis. Right. And um, David gave a single dose, well actually gave three doses, but at, at separated by several weeks, and measured exactly that, was virus coming out of these cells. And he could show that in the six patients he looked at. It's exciting. Yeah, there was, um, if you look before they got the three doses of varinostat or after, there was an increased amount of what we call cell-associated RNA or virus inside the cell right. um, after the three doses of varinostat. So we're, um, so I think that's really encouraging for us. So our inclusion criteria are quite stringent because um, uh -huh. high CD4 count and at the beginning we were only enrolling patients on NNRTI or non-PI containing regimens. So oh, okay. we, we, we had a lot of interest but obviously couldn't enrol a lot of people. Um, and so what I presented on Wednesday was the initial safety data. We are, we are measuring the virus in the cells and plasma in the, in the gut. Um, but we will present that once we're going to do an interim analysis at 10 patients, which should be towards the end of the year. But yes. we did present some of the safety data and um, mm -hmm. we, we found mild um, adverse events that we were expecting to find with Varinostat. Right. The Varinostat is used for treating cancer and, and, so, and it's being given to thousands of people. So it's very, the toxicities are well described. What, um, the concern is what's long-term toxicities because um, there's potential that it could cause other problems. Right. So, of course, all of this is discussed with patients and still we had many patients that were really keen to um, participate. Again, um, I, 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 in, my, in my talk, I also talked a little bit about ethical issues in designing the mm -hmm. studies and, and um, how we work out risk-benefit, you know, what are acceptable risks. Yes. For people to achieve a cure and what we think are acceptable risks and what the regulatory bodies think and what the community think i think we're all learning is quite different yes. so we're going to have to find a way to satisfy all those all those groups